So time's finally come to start putting the two ZZ back together and get back into the uh, into the Lotus. Um, this is the block freshly back from Cambridge Rebores. They've fitted dart and sleeves, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and I'm going to go through the process of actually building this engine up now. So first thing we're going to do is put the oil squirters back in, so don't forget. Um, and then we're going to look at the ring gaps by putting the rings into the cylinders and just using feeler gauges to check those gaps. Um, so the dart and sleeves. While I'm talking about them, you can see them here. So this is the original material and the sleeve material. Um, so that's now a mild steel liner in the uh, block. So it should be much harder than the original liners. Um, in any case, my original liners have scored, so they had to be uh, bored out and add to the sleeve that will get a new block essentially. Um, so this was my solution. So um, spin it back over, put the oil squirters back in, and then we'll go and have a look at the. Uh, Okay, so that's all works is now in place. So now I'm going to turn the block over and um, check the fit of these piston rings. So in the set of rings, we've got these three components that make up the oil scraper. We've got ring number one and ring number two. So I'm going to spin the block over, push these down to the cylinders with a piston, and then measure the gap between them and make sure it's in spec as per the manual that came with the rings. So here we are going to do the ring checks now. So what we do is essentially take a ring and put it in the cylinder, which I've done with the uh, number two ring at the moment. And you push that down with a piston, about the depth of the piston, and that makes sure that it is sitting completely square with the cylinder. You then use a set of feeler gauges and this gap in the ring here you essentially use a feeler gauge to work out what that gap is. And I am looking for around 0.18 on the number two rings and 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.018 of an inch on the number two rings and 0 0.016 of an inch on the number one rings. So the number two rings are actually great out the box. The number one rings have required some filing. So I've taken a little bit of material off my number one ring and um, keeping the edges as square as possible um, and that is now at 0 0.016 of an inch gap so that is the number one cylinder done um, ready to put the rings on the cylinder on the piston sorry and um, insert the piston to the cylinder okay so i spun the block over time to put the crankshaft in and then the bearing cap so this is some ultra slick engine assembly lube so i'm going to put this around the bearing where the bearings are going to go and put the bearings in um, and I'll put this on the inner side of the bearings as well to make sure everything's lubricated as I put it in. Um, so just a, a bit of a coating of it everywhere. Fairly messy stuff. Um, I'll just get that on all these surfaces. Make sure everything's properly lubricated. Okay. A new set of ACL race bearings going in here. See, there's a, a notch on these bearings. That notch fits in the notch in the block. I need to push into place like so. We'll again give those a nice coating of a assembly lube so that everything rotates nice. So I just put my thrust bearings in place. So on the um, center journal, we have a thrust bearing on both sides, <coughs> and then the crank. into position, straighten up the thrust bearings because you'll probably knock them when you put the crank in. And you should see that the crank fits nicely, rotates nicely, spread a bit of that assembly lube round so the journals are covered. Um, and then we can start thinking about putting a bearing cap on. So the same again for the bearing cap, going to put some assembly lube in where the bearings are going to go and then put bearings in place. <coughs> 
So these, they have a notch in the center rather than on the edge, so you can tell which ones are for the cap versus which ones are for the block. And again, they just push into place. Okay, and there we have it, the uh, main bearing sorted. Um, so the next thing to do, I use ARP main studs and ARP head studs, but we need to install the main studs. I will um, be installing the main studs during these holes along here. So I'll get those in and then I'm going to apply some sealant to the bearing cap, which I use a Loctite 518, and then put the bearing cap in place. Okay, so that's the main studs installed. Um, the Loctite sealant around the edge. Why I really like this stuff, it um, only goes hard on the compression, so anything that's left gets washed away. Um, you don't get it clogging up anything, it just dissolves into your oil and then gets washed out. Uh, it's also super easy to clean, so I use it on my sump every time I take the sump off. And just scrape off the old layer, it seals really well, but as soon as the compression's gone, you can pretty much just peel it away. Um, but now, um, just give this a quick rotate, make sure all those journals are covered in assembly loop and then I'm going to drop the uh, bearing cap into place. Just squeeze it down for the dowels. Okay, and now it's a case of putting the um, the main um, nuts on the on the main studs and then tightening those up. Um, there is a specific order and a specific torque pattern, so I'll get the nuts loosely on there and then I'll walk you through that. Okay, so bearing cups in place, all of the main um, nuts on the main studs uh, loosely on there, and now I have to torque them up. So the torquing pattern is starting at the centre: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, the ARP studs take 60 pound foot of torque if you're using their lubricant or 70 if you're using an oil. I'm using that Permatex um, assembly lubricant so I'm going to go for about 65 pound foot. Um, do it in passes so don't go the whole way at once. So I'm going to get to 27. And that's bearing cap in place. There's now a series of smaller bolts that go in all of these holes, which I'll put in place. Okay, so I've finished with the bearing cap and the crank there in place, so now it's time to put the pistons into the uh, cylinders. This piston ring compressor from Wiseco makes life much easier, so we put that on top of the cylinder. Take our piston, make sure it's the right orientation, slide it down into the, the conrod, down into the bore. Slide the piston into the bore and then push the cylinder, sorry, the piston, and that is nicely into the seat. Okay, so that's all four pistons in the cylinders. Now, time to turn it over. And work on lining up the con rods with the, uh, the bearings on the crank. And here we have our first major problem. The Oil squirters actually contact the bottom of the piston before the piston has done its full travel. So I don't really understand why that is. Um, these pistons are designed for this engine. Um, but clearly not designed very well. Um, yeah, that piston is bottomed out completely on the oil squirter. Um, very strange. I'm going to go and do a little bit of research about that and try and figure out what's going on. Okay, so that's all the pistons installed. Um, I've done all the conrod bolts. I'll try to flip over so you can see. So, when putting the conrod bolts in, ARP 2000 bolts these are, you get a specified torque setting for different oil weights. Um, you can also go on the ARP website and find out the stretch that you should get at that specified torque. So for these bolts, it should be 0.0056 of an inch. Um, 
I use the micrometer to measure these bolts. You have to have the crank slightly rotated to get the micrometer in, and then you can measure um, each of the bolts as you install them, make sure they get to the correct stretch. Um, stretch is a much better way of determining whether they've got to their yield strength or not. The torque has so many varying factors based on things like friction of the threads um, that you could have um, completely different yield strengths of the bolts um, with different with the same torque setting purely due to different environmental factors in each of the threads. Um, so that's all done. Um, next thing is going to be putting the head on. So I've installed the head studs. Um, going to be a head gasket and then drop the head on. Torque that down. Um, and that might be where I call it a day. So that's the head on. Um, I've just put the camshafts back in, loosely put the bearing caps back on. Going to tighten those down now. Then look at fitting the oil pump, timer chain, um, cover, and the water pump. Uh, I'll probably put the valve cover on just to keep everything clean. And then I'm going to call it's it a day. Cylinder head on, camshafts back in, torque down, and timing chain is fitted. So when you fit in the timing chain, you've got marks on the uh, crankshaft sprocket down here for the yellow mark on the chain. You've got a mark on your uh, exhaust camshaft sprocket here and this line on the intake um, camshaft. So that's in place. I'm going to put on the uh, crank angle sensor plate um, and then put the timing cover on. So unfortunately the gasket for the uh, timing chain cover is stretched and pretty rank so I'm going to change it for a new one so I'm going to leave the engine as it is now and um, I'm going to wrap up in some polythene to keep it all clean I've fitted the oil pickup and the baffle plate and things on the bottom um, and some ancillaries around and about so it should be quite a fast job now I'll get the timing chain on water pump on and then I can start bolting on supercharger exhaust manifold gearbox lift it into the car and um, yeah there we go so a successful day, but a few more to come.